Hey everyone, I hope you're well. Uh, Ryan here from Next Level Property Investing. Just before we get started, don't forget to hit the bell notification and comment on the videos. Let me know what you want to see more of. And if you want to book a free strategy call, head over to nextlevelpropertyinvesting.com. So this one's all about excuses. Um, all the excuses in the world to not get started in property. So for me, obviously, I do a lot of uh, free strategy calls and I speak to a lot of people. And I've also had a lot of mentees come on the program and, you know, I hear the excuses and uh, what holds people back and what they believe that they need to. They're, they're kind of telling themselves these things that are just, you know, not true and holding them back. The biggest one for me is no money. So people think that you need a lot of money to get into property. And for me, that's just not true. Um, you can get into property with very little to no money down. Now, I don't think no money down, I've said this a million times, I don't think it's a uh, viable long-term strategy. I don't think it's a viable quick acquisition strategy. I think most of the properties that will have no money down deals will be very run down and they will need some work doing on them. So I don't think you'll be able to, yes, you might be able to get a, a deal where you're not paying a deposit um, and you can acquire the property, but I don't think you'll be able to get the property and then be able to successfully run it as a service accommodation, HMO or a single let, because I don't think the condition of it will be great. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's the anomalies out there and uh, I'm sure you know you can. You, there are deals out there where it's you know, no money down. Personally, I've never done one. Um, all of my deals have at least been little money down, uh, if not up to you know, refurbs. So the cheapest I think I've done it for is about 400 pounds, which was a smart, smart TV and some soft furnishings in, in, in a serviced accommodation property. But um, you know, that was for me quite a cheap entry. I had that money back in month one. If, if you're getting into service accommodation, you're gonna to have to spend money to you know top up things. If a single let landlord is giving you a property, then you're gonna to need to buy you know even just pots, pans, cutlery, things like that. So, but money shouldn't be a factor. You know anybody can you know get credit cards. Anybody can save up a month's salary. You can cut your expenses to to get these tiny you know these few extra hundred pounds. You could probably sell some stuff in your house and in your garage to raise three, four, five hundred pounds, and that's all you would need to get one property started. Now that one property I was just talking about, net cash flows me about six hundred pounds a month, and that's on a rent to SA deal. So you know we're talking seven thousand two hundred pounds a year there from one property. Now if I could go and sell some stuff from my garage and put that into uh, a property like that, and then get seven thousand two hundred pounds a month, as long as I'm clever with the six hundred pounds, I could go and get another one, or maybe even another two of a similar sort of setup. And again, I'm now at sort of twenty one thousand pounds a year, and you can see how it quickly snowballs. So for me, money is not an excuse. Um, also, if you're looking at BRR here all the time, well, I've got no money to invest. Um, I cannot raise a deposit. If you find a good property deal, you will find uh, the money. I guarantee you that. And if you know how to speak to the right people, if you hang around with the right people and you ask the right questions to friends and family, you will all of a sudden be presented with some money. If you can prove that you know what you're talking about, you know how to pull these um, projects off. And just because you haven't done one doesn't mean you don't know how to do it. You know, you can work with people, you can piggyback on experience, and you know, you can leverage their experience to build trust that you do know what you're doing. And you know, you can even partner with these people. If it's gonna get you going and you're gonna get 50% of something, then it's better than 100% of nothing. So BRR can work with no money down. If you find a really good deal, um, you'll find an investor. An investor might front the whole cash plus the refurb. And then uh, you, as long as you're confident you can get the mortgage, you get the mortgage and you pull all the money back out and you pay your investor back during that period. Um, you know, you can either decide whether you wanna pay him monthly. If you've got no money, that could be a problem. Or you could roll all the interest up. So when you get paid at the end of the deal, back from your mortgage lender, you can pay them back in full plus their interest. And there's plenty of people out there with um, wanting these type of deals and quite open to these type of deals. So you should go after them and not let it hold you back. The next thing that um, is another one that really bugs me is um, time. I haven't got enough time. I guarantee anybody that tells me that, I can sit down with them, I can have a look at their average week, and I bet you I can find two hours per day. Whether that's getting up an hour earlier on a morning and doing something more productive, whether it's um, cutting out your lunch break at work and deciding um, to actually do something productive. The 10 or 15 minute chats that you have with your friends and family as you're driving, you could be doing something more productive. You know, the half an hour that you spend talking to work colleagues, 
the 45 minutes that you spend watching Netflix on a night, you know, there's all these different types of efficiencies, you know, even to the point where, you know, maybe if, if your partner um, wants you to, to do this to make a better life for yourself, you know, they could even bath the kids while you spend half an hour, um, you know, doing something productive to move your property business forward. So for me, time is just not an excuse, you know, you only need six or seven hours sleep a night that is proven, uh, it's been tried, it's been tested. So Go to bed at 10 o'clock, get up at five o'clock. You know, I'm sure with between 5, p 5 a.m. and 10 p.m. at night, you can find two hours per day. Um, and that's a lot, by the way. You don't need to be doing that much. If you're doing two hours a day, you'd be moving forward very quickly. So you'd find two hours per day and you'd be able to move your property business forward in a, in a, in a fast, fast speed, knowing what you're doing, focusing on the right things. You know, if you, even if you start at two hours of education every day, you know, if you're getting 14 hours of property education a week, you know, you're gonna move forward quickly. You're gonna learn a lot of stuff. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're necessarily on the right or wrong stuff. If you're just soaking up as much knowledge as you possibly can, you'll start to figure out what works for you, what doesn't, who you like to trust, what you think sounds reasonable, what you think sounds wrong, and you can make those decisions. But consuming all that information, um, over you know 14 hours a week consuming information you're going to become more experienced you know you're going to get more knowledge and you're going to be able to start taking a lot more action in your business so for me they're the two main um, excuses that i hear time and time again why people you know can't get into property and um, yeah i think that the, the last one is is probably motivation doesn't happen as much as probably the other two but i do come across it at, at times where people just aren't motivated um, they just you know they've got the tools uh, they've got uh, all the knowledge they've got the time they've potentially even got a bit of money and they just kind of seem to do it they kind of seem to do it and for me unfortunately that's only something that you can solve yes um, you know as a mentor I can try and pull you along and I can try and create accountability for you and you know but ultimately if you haven't got that hunger and drive in your body then you know you're not gonna you're not gonna move forward you're never gonna solve that motivation issue the only way you can do it is by finding your why so why do you want to get into property what will it create for you think about it you know what's 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 the long-term outcome of, of property you know I ask a lot of people on the break through call what is your 12 month goal you know and they'll give me a figure and then it's kind of like why why do you want to get to that figure and you dig deeper and deeper into it you know and it always boils down to a few things which is obviously financial freedom and time freedom you know two two things that kind of go hand in hand you know if you if you create the financial freedom you're more than likely work for yourself and create the time freedom um, the good thing about property is because once it's set it can be a set and forget almost strategy uh, you know even that you know the service accommodation portfolio I've got the HMOs the single lets you know I still have time freedom I can choose what I want to do when I want to do it you know because I've got systems and processes and good people in place uh, within my company to run those um, th those properties for me so you know I can choose what I want to do, when I want to do it, how long I want to go away on holiday for. And ultimately, that's what most people are striving for. Um, you know, just that more time back with your family. You can pick the kids up from school. You can go to the football practices, you know, and you're never missing a beat. And, you know, that for me is is success. And that for me is, is, is why we all strive to do this. And, you know, ultimately, um, you know, they are. But if, you, if you're not motivated, I just, you know, I, I kind of, you can't inject motivation into somebody. You can inject knowledge. You know, you can inject direction. And as long as they're willing to follow the game plan and stick to the process, then they'll get results. But one thing you just cannot inject into people is motivation. Ultimately, you've got to find your why. And if you find a good why and a good reason, you'll get out of bed at 5 a.m. every morning. You'll find your two hours per day and you'll find your investors if you've got no money. And you'll start your property journey kicking forward. And before you know it, you'll be out of any jobs. You'll have your financial freedom and you'll have financial time. And it'll be the best thing that you've ever done. Um, so get your journey started today. Stop making the excuses and get kickstarted. Take care.